Good afternoon to everyone. One more time, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we are going to talk about iSCSI failover. Okay, then let us start. I have, I will log into another machine. Here is 2008 uh, server. Okay, let us start our. I have prepared two DSS servers today because of the iSCSI failover. Okay. I will introduce servers first. The best configuration for iSCSI failover is when both servers are identical, but in, it is not a must, and this is also in our case. The first server is an entry-level uh, server, and the second server is just very, very s simple workstation, even with software aid. So here, on the first server, we are using a hardware aid controller. Um, this time, this is Arika, and we have eight SAS drives. Everything is configured as a RAID 5. Okay. Small capacity because there are uh, SAS drives. Okay. And the second server, as I mentioned, this is a very simple workstation, and we have configured here software RAID 1. Okay, so software RAID. You see MD multi disk device 0. Okay, that's the software RAID 1. Two 500-bit five, um, hard disks, so very small capacity. But that's enough for us for testing. Both systems are not formatted, are empty, not configured yet. We'll start everything uh, from scratch. So by meantime, I will already select the first unit and apply for formatting on the both systems. This is in volume manager volume groups. Okay. Formatic takes maybe one, two minutes. It's very fast. By, by meantime also, I would like to show you the first chart we are going to configure. Okay, so I scarcely fell over. That's the one. Okay, so we see we have for, uh, we have prepared two OpenE uh, DSS servers. The first one will have uh, access IP in sub zero two hundred thirty. That's important. DSS 230, and the second one, DSS 240, access over 0, 240, okay, that's submit. Uh, so we will use two cards only for our presentation. On AETH0, on 0, 230, we will configure the um, heartbeat connection, and uh, that will be our GUI management access, and on this card, also, we will access our storage. So, Windows or ES6 will also use this path. And this is why on this path we will configure so-called virtual IP address, because both servers will be available for, uh, for the initiator, so iSCSI um, ICE initiator from uh, Windows 2008 or ES6. via this one single join, so-called virtual IP, okay? And the virtual IP, we are going to put uh, this IP address. And on the second uh, card, second port, we will replicate. This is optional, can be direct connection, and uh, it can be also over the switch. In our case, uh, we have uh, just direct connection. This is important for the, our second presentation when uh, 
we will change some IP configurations. That's the first one, as simple as possible. Uh, we have available a bit more complicated presentation. Uh, this will be available on our web in the next days. And uh, if you would like to see this today, I will also copy uh, this presentation to the FTP where our webinar is recorded, so you'll be able, able to also to download and see the more complicated presentation. So the, I will show you shortly how it looks like. A more complicated setup. Okay, that's here. So in such case, we will use four ports and even two switches. In order to make it redundant over the switches, we uh, have configured here bonding. And on the two bonds, we configured also the virtual IP address, right? So this configuration is a bit more complicated. And we provide also step by step how to configure this. Watching our presentation, um, you will be in a position to make also a more complicated one. Okay. That's... We have the same presentation for unicast, the uh, same for, uh, multi, for broadcast. So there are both presentations showing difference. Good. Okay, so we start to configure uh, this chart. Okay. It's quite easy, so I will start at once. We have prepared the link 230, 240, so we have uh, already tabs. Uh, volumes are, volume groups already created. So let us create a small iSCSI volume. So iSCSI. Important thing, we want uh, this for replication, for volume replication, because for the iSCSI failover, we must uh, replicate the volumes. If you forget this, you can do it later on, but advantage is when both volumes are created from scratch and at once for volume replication, then initializing can happen at once. Don't need to really initialize the volumes. Both must be in block I.O. There is option to use the file I.O., but uh, for iSCSI failover, for all the uh, to be failure resistant, we have to use block IO. Okay, so let us create, let's say, 100 giga volume. Uh, good, creating, and let me do it the same thing on the right side. And uh, by meantime, I will also check what kind of questions are coming. Okay, so let me set this. Volume replication, 100. Okay. As I mentioned, uh, you can, if you forget this, you can uh, modify the volume, so modify, and then you can add or remove and apply. So there is always op option to modify later such a such created volumes where volume replication is missing or you want to remove the volume replication uh, function okay we've modified let me check the questions if there are any there is the question for vmware it is recommended to use uh, fire can this be done safely yes uh, this is actually a bit all the recommendation uh, we we are discussing to remove this uh, recommendation because uh, in older software it was huge difference between FireIO and uh, BlockIO. Uh, currently, it is not, and for iSCSI failover, you have to use BlockIO if you really want to be any power failure resistant because. In FireIO, in case of uh, power uh, failure, it can happen. It is not um, always, but from time to time can happen that the files which are just replicated or just copied uh, and uh, you power off the primary server 
um, the, the file may be inconsistent on the secondary server. In case of Block.io, it doesn't happen. This is why um, for the failure resistance, you need to use uh, Block.io. Okay, so we have created um, on both systems 100 giga volume uh, let, uh, for application. So let us complete the replication configuration. On the source server, we have already the source mode. Let us replicate over the second uh, card, so 192, 168, uh, 1 and uh, so over subnet 1 and I'm on 230 server so I need to put the card from the second server so 240 okay and the same I do on the opposite server uh, but the secondary server I uh, need to be switched the volume replication to destination okay destination means volume can be mounted only by source. Nobody else can mount this as long as it is in a destination mode. If you will be curious what is inside, you can create a snapshot of this volume and then have a look into the snapshot. Or switch manually to source and then it is it can be exported. Otherwise, cannot be exported. It can be only available for the uh, uh, source one. Okay, so 192, 168 subnet 1 and of course 230 uh, the first one right because we are on the second one good so here we have we done with configuration and on the primary server we just need to create the task so refreshing uh, we see that the both logical volumes uh, find each, each other so let me Let's say mirror zero zero. That's the task name. And this parameter, that's the bandwidth for uh, syncing. So during initializing, when the data on the primary and on the secondary are not in the same uh, state, let's say after you disconnect uh, the cable and then you created some new data on the primary server, then you connect the cable again uh, the data needs to be uh, resync so that's the speed of resyncing and uh, later on when when the destination volume show the, uh, consistent in this case uh, it will use the full available speed it is recommended not to uh, to not give this value to high uh, because uh, this resyncing is working with the very high priority so it can eat all your system resources okay i start the task so in one giga network we recommend 40 in 10 giga we recommend let's say 200 okay so the task is already started let us see the status of this task and the status tasks okay and as i mentioned it because we created 100 giga volumes uh, with replication the system knows that both are actually ad identical and this is why it will not resyncing it will just uh, start as a consistent both okay if uh, we will modify and create this later, we'll see that this is resyncing. Uh, but this option, of course, for the uh, webinar is not good because we will need to wait a long, longer time. So probably if this is not available, so I will create smaller volume, let's say 10 giga, to not wait long until uh, the volumes are in the real mirror. Now volumes are in the real mirror. And then the next step, we need to export these volumes to the external world. So we export over iSCSI target. Uh, 